Hello, I'm Philip Duncan, and thank you for joining us for our May Climate Watch update, brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our official business partners at IBM. So let's take a look and see what is going on as we kick off for the start of this month. And there's a lot of high pressure on the animated wind map, although in New Zealand, it's pouring with rain in many places thanks to this small low pressure zone. But between the low and the high, it is pulling down this subtropical air for the first several days of May. So May is kicking off warmer than average, more humid than average, and wetter than average, and also quite windy as well. Although windy weather in autumn is fairly normal, but having it as a nor'easter or northerly, that's a little bit more unusual. We do tend to see those sort of northerly wind events being quite brief, and usually it's lots of southerlies and westerlies blowing through at this time of the year, but not quite at the moment. So low pressure out in the Tasman is there for a few days. The high to the east in the bright white, that is there for at least another week or so, not moving away till the second week of May. And then behind all this, there's the next high pressure zone coming out of the Indian Ocean. There's also a small amount of low pressure stuck around Australia, and in fact, the southeastern corner of Australia more in a traditional autumn weather pattern, sort of warm one day, cold the next, lots of windy southwesters, whereas the New Zealand side, high pressure out to the east is dominating. And as we head through towards El Nino, we should be seeing more of that high pressure over here in the Tasman. And that encourages more west to southwest winds over New Zealand and fewer of these nor'east events. So we'll see if that starts to happen. So speaking of El Nino, what is going on? Well, here's the latest from the Bureau of Meteorology, Meteorology, excuse me, out of Australia. So we're in an El Nino watch, which means it is looking likely to uh, be an El Nino by the end of the year. If you take a look at the model of all models, that's what you're seeing here. So in May, we're still in neutral, very much so at the moment with that chaotic weather pattern. It pretty much stays into that neutral zone all the way through to about July. And it's around about July or even August, and this is September over here, it's, it's in this period here where we think uh, El Nino will be announced or declared. And as we head in towards spring, that means uh, more likely to see windy westerlies and southwesters in the New Zealand area, which makes western areas cloudier and a bit wetter and eastern areas a bit drier. Taking a look at all these different models from around the world, excluding New Zealand, unfortunately, but this is the neutral zone we're in at the moment. So that's where we are for now, around about here, April, May. This is the part where it starts to get more into this El Nino block. And you can see over here, El Nino, La Nina. So the last La Nina event, we were only just hovering on the threshold. Look at this one. We're right into it. So it looks like it's going to be a strong El Nino as we go through 2023. So let's now take a look at the month of May. What is going on? As I say, it's a chaotic weather pattern at the moment when it's neutral. It's not driven by La Nina or El Nino. It's sort of just whatever gets thrown our way. And at the moment, it feels more like La Nina for New Zealand because of the high pressure block to the east, low pressure in the Tasman, and that's encouraging air flows from the Cook Islands and around Tonga down over New Zealand. So that's the first week. This might be the first day of May, but it's also the first week. Very little change this week in what you're seeing here. And you're seeing a good mixture of high pressure and low pressure. But what we've been seeing since March and across April is a lot of high pressure coming through the southern part of Australia and out over New Zealand and stopping here to the east. So that is certainly the first week. As we go into the second week, you can see what I mean about this being a very slow moving system because the high is still there and that low pressure zone is still there as well. Part of that low pressure from around New South Wales and Tasmania drifting further into New Zealand. The low pressure system we've got now still with us Monday next week in the second week of May. So we've got a bit of low pressure around here, but look, another very powerful high coming in from Australia. But we're certainly seeing as we go through to winter, a bigger break, a bigger gap between the high pressure zones. They were a lot closer in previous months. You could sort of see the next one building out in the Indian Ocean, not anymore, not as we're going into May. So the highs themselves are still huge, really big, but there's sort of bigger gaps in between them, and those gaps are where we get these rainmakers coming through. So let's move through now to the middle of May. This is our final map that we do because you go longer range than this and it gets really inaccurate. So you're better off to sort of blur your eyes a bit once you get beyond three weeks. But look at this. There is that next belt of high pressure from Australia stretching right out 
and across New Zealand. So it certainly looks like we're going into a more settled phase as we go through May. Uh, plenty of easterly winds for the tropics and parts of Queensland as well. But we're also seeing a lot of low pressure down here. And in fact, this weather map looks quite tidy for the time of year that we're going into with all the low pressure down in the Southern Ocean, high pressure over New Zealand and much of Australia, and then the next set of low pressure further up in the tropics. But like I just said, you can't see the next highs coming out of the Indian Ocean. There's a much bigger gap behind them. So I, I see high pressure a bit like trucks or buses in the atmosphere because they're bigger and they're a bit slower. Uh, you're not seeing quite so many trucks and buses coming along. And so another low pressure zone there means that we're going to see a bit more variety, I think, as we get towards the end of May or certainly going into June. But remember, the left-hand side of a high pressure zone, draw a line in the middle of it, the left-hand half of it is the warmer side. So as that moves in and across to New Zealand, there'll be another burst, most likely, of warmer northerly winds. Let's have a look at the soil moisture levels, thanks to the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research. This map is already probably not that accurate because of the rain that's currently falling from the subtropical uh, system. So driest here up around Northland, very sure that's reversing now. We're seeing rain falling around western parts of Auckland and Waikato, so that will be changing things. And plenty of rain here in Bay of Plenty and Coromandel as well. So I think we'll be seeing a lot more blue showing up there and on the west coast of the South Island. But the eastern side may start to dry out a little bit more. Just depends on if we get a wet southerly with one of those highs as it starts to move in. But uh, certainly drier than normal at the moment starting to show up at least around places like South Canterbury, for example. Now having a look at the sea surface temperatures, La Nina is gone, but the warmth is still around. We've still got uh, the marine heat wave. So the right-hand map shows you the marine heat wave, the left-hand map shows you the current temperatures. So temperature-wise, if you wanna go for a swim, uh, you're talking around about 20 degrees still for many of these northern areas, with the air temperature also about the same, fairly mild to actually go for a swim. Not quite the same story in the lower South Island around Dunedin, where it's currently only about 12 to 14 degrees, although the West Coast, much warmer, if you wanna jump in the sea there, if it's calm enough for you. But look at the marine heat wave. This is showing you how much warmer than average it currently is, and you're seeing a lot up here in the redder shading, very little in the way of blue or normal. So sea conditions, sea surface conditions at the moment around New Zealand remain warmer than average. Let's take a look at rainfall now on the way. The 16-day rain accumulation map uh, showing New Zealand and Australia. Australia, no rain for a massive chunk of Australia at the moment. Just around the fringes, you're getting some wet weather. Whereas New Zealand, that subtropical rain event coming down, lots of places here into the blues, into the dark blues. So a closer version of that, you see these arrows, they're all coming out of the 100 to 300 millimeter mark. Now the 300 millimeter mark, most likely around the west coast, but we could be seeing over 200 millimeters around um, parts of the western side of Nelson, Takaka for example, and the eastern side of Bay of Plenty. Otherwise, you're in that sort of 100 millimeter mark, and you can see these maps in more detail on our website. And we've also got rainfall for the next three months ahead. Now this is a little more interesting from IBM. This is sort of showing the transition away from the neutral pattern we're in now, where it's chaotic, to a more organized uh, El Nino, which might see more westerlies blowing across the country. Now this would be um, a bit of a transition as we go away from that wetter weather on the eastern side. So it's leaning a little bit wetter, but to be honest with you, when you look at the next three months ahead, it's leaning just a little bit drier than average. But of course, May, wetter than average. So May could be wetter than average. June, July might be the side that starts to dry things out. Uh, you know, don't 100% lock in these long range updates. We're different to NIWA. We don't sort of assume that this is definitely happening. We are more of the belief that New Zealand's a very small country and one weather system can break our long range maps. But if you're trying to plan months ahead, you're trying to get a feeling for where we might be going, it looks as though a couple of southerlies in here and a couple of easterlies uh, through May will fade away to more westerly driven weather and that will dry things out a bit. Uh, long term with temperatures, no change. We've been seeing this for a long time in the yellow, lean slightly warmer. Parts of inland Australia though going the other way, leaning slightly uh, cooler for you. So New Zealand certainly warmer than average and wetter than average for May, but June, July might be showing some signs of starting to dry out. 
And that is all from me for our Climate Watch update for this month. Glad to be back again. We will see you again in a month's time.